Hello and welcome everybody to my Drake May prospect breakdown. The 6'4", 230 redshirt sophomore from the University of North Carolina has some really good characteristics and attributes that I really like when evaluating quarterback prospects. But first, Drake May was a five-star recruit from Charlotte, North Carolina who declared to his home state team. After redshirting in his first year, May became the starter in 2022 and balled out. He was PFF's fifth highest graded quarterback, 91.5, and was fourth in the FBS in passing yards and fifth in passing touchdowns with 38. Most importantly, he led the FBS in EPA or expected points added. In 2022, he was also the ACC Player of the Year, ACC Offensive Player of the Year, First Team All ACC, and the ACC Rookie of the Year. In 2023, he did take a statistical drop, going from 38 passing touchdowns to 24. His passer rating QBR declined a little bit as well as his interceptions going up, but he was still PFF's 11th highest graded quarterback at 90.6. But Drake May comes out of the Josh Allen style of playing. Throw it deep and be aggressive on the ground, even if it kills you. May will consistently test one-on-ones and try to heave the ball 50 to 60 yards. The stats support this notion because he threw 1,452 yards with balls that traveled 20 plus air yards. May has a certain crafty or creative nature to his play style. May always keeps his eyes downfield, so even if he's getting sacked, he'll still try to eject the ball to receiver in the area. To go along with that, sometimes he'll even try to hurdle a defender or just try to do something creative during the play. But May also has the ability to throw with anticipation, throw absolute darts into tight windows, and combined with his arm strength, accuracy, and raw talent, May's arm is his best attribute. He's great at moving around in the pocket and avoiding pressure, and he's also a threat on the ground. He's also a relatively fast quarterback, and at 230 pounds, he's also able to pick up tough yards. But because he's so aggressive, he can either make huge plays or crucial mistakes. May sometimes will not throw the ball away to give the play a second life, causing an interception or costly fumble. This risk can be caused by either from pressure or from May throwing into tight coverage. May's accuracy can sometimes vary. He can either have pinpoint accuracy or completely miss or overthrow an open receiver. This can be due to his footwork sometimes being off. However, his overall balance and structure in the pilot is solid in my opinion. But overall, May is very efficient in getting a team into scoring position, again first in EPA, and in the red zone, he's hard to contain. And when kept in the pocket, May is again extremely efficient. There are certain prospects where the film really speaks for itself, prospects where you don't need to overanalyze too much of the film, and I believe that May is one of them. So with that being said, let's get into the film. So, bit of an interesting concept here from UNC. They have their, I think, might be their tight end or our second running back um, as their outside receiver. Gonna have him running an in route. This uh, number eight is gonna be running an out route. And then, uh, I don't know exactly this receiver. However, he's gonna be basically um, in first, then gonna cut up, and then cut in last second into the end zone. Basically, this is against cover two, probably cover two man, because uh, all of these outside cornerbacks are manned up. And then for Drake May, this is just a strike. This is against three guys in the end zone. I'll show the other angle. And here's the other angle. Uh, Drake May hits the top of the drop, takes one step, and then just strikes it in there very close to the receiver as well, I might add, or very close to the cornerback, I might add. But absolute strike there from Drake May. All right, so in this concept, we have two comeback routes uh, for the boundary receivers. This inside slot guy um, is going to be going on a post route, and then this receiver is going on a go route. So for the play, a bit of pressure comes from the inside, but Drake May steps up, wide open guy as he shakes the slot cornerback uh, in the middle, and then he gets the touchdown. All right, so it's undoubtable that Drake May has a hand cannon. However, this is an instance of him just overthrowing it using too much arm strength uh, on this corner route. All right, here's one of those just fun, creative out there plays that Drake May is was kind of known for in college. Um, see, defenders clamp, Drake May just jumps it over their heads. And you see Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen do this all the time. And Drake May is was known to do this in college a bunch. And that's always a good skill to have to get out of bad situations and to, you know, on this play, it was even a first down. Drake May was always super effective rolling out or throwing on the run in his college career. Here's a crossbody throw. All right, here's literally the first play of the Notre Dame game. Drake May doesn't like what he sees in his first two reads. Off-platform throw and phenomenal catch by the wide receiver here. One thing that I really like about Drake May is his ability to fit balls very well into tight windows. Here on this play, he's going to try to fit in a ball between here on the slant route. And he's literally trying to fit it in between three people if you include the ref here. 
Another thing that I really like about Drake May is his willingness to throw one-on-one -on -one balls and his aggressiveness. Here, we're gonna be, or this wide receiver is gonna be facing press man. Drake May is just gonna put it up for him one-on-one -on -one and great throw to fit it behind the receiver or behind the corner for a huge gain. But him being so aggressive and him wanting to create so many things, sometimes he can get himself into trouble. Uh, on this play, he luckily gets away from it, but he runs into this defender, two defenders and puts a ball into harm's way around three defenders. And again, here's a, just another good example of him not holding the ball for too long, but then not knowing when to get it away. Drake May usually is good about throwing the ball away when the play is dead, but sometimes when he wants to push more things during the play, he'll keep it and put it in his left hand to run, and then he won't be able to get the ball out. Alright, so just as I explained, you know, this play and him putting the ball in his left hand, taking a sack, I'm going to leave the play running to show you a great example of where the positives come in with Drake May, because he could do that, but then he'll just uncork this ball for like 40, 50 yards, throw it over the safety's head for a massive touchdown. I mean, that's just the positives what you get with Drake May, just easily, uh, easily just flicks the ball, hits the top of his drop, layers it over both the cornerback and safety for a obviously touchdown. If you like Drake May play and let him uncork and hit, let him be super aggressive with the ball, he's going to reward you with this things. But sometimes he'll take a sack or two. But that's you get these touchdowns when you let him do his thing. And then, dude, like, watch this. Drake May feels the pressure coming from the corner blitz, uncorks it again, massive touchdown. And then just watch this. This is just another great play. Feels the corner blitz coming, throws it, ball being hit, and then just dunks that ball in there for a very late touchdown in this Notre Dame game. All right, so on this play, the slot receiver is going to be running a post route. I want to do one thing here. So watch Drake May hit the top of his drop, loading to throw. The receiver hasn't broke on his route yet. And this uh, cornerback is in his throwing lane. However, Drake May, top of his drop, throws with anticipation and is pretty much made that play wide open. All right, here's Drake May on this play, giving this some second life. Huge gap in here, rolls out to his right, keeps the ball in his hand, doesn't throw it out, and gives the receiver a chance to come back in for a first down. Another excellent play from this pit game. This was a little earlier. I accidentally skipped this one, but look at the pocket mobility. You're not going to make the arm tackle, and I'm not sliding either. I'm just going to run this ball all the way for a first down. I hope you guys are still watching because this is where the fun really starts. So Drake May is going to roll out to his left, and the, he's got the ball in his left hand, and look at where, look at how he throws it. He's throwing the ball with his left hand for a touchdown. I mean, that's what we talk about with the creativity and the, the fun plays that Drake May has the ability to do. All right, here's just a clear, honest... Drake May mistake. This is his fault. Linebacker comes in on a blitz with the running back helping. He just tries to throw it weird and ends up fumbling this ball. I think it got called an incompletion, but very lucky. Like that's not called a fumble. Uh, I mean, I guess he did get out of it, but just a mistake. Can't really do that. You're going to get in trouble in the NFL that way. All right, so here's the route concept. Uh, the slot inside is going to be running an out route. Slot inside is going to be running a slant or an in route. And then this outside receiver is going to be running a skinny post. Drake May reaches the top of his drop, rolls out slightly to the right. And this is what you want, you notice. Shout out to, by the way, shout out to Theo Ash, who was one that said this. Look at how straight of a line that this receiver is on as Drake May. Just 50 yard throw, by the way. Straight line, 52 yard completion. The common occurrence with Drake May's interceptions is he's trying to force something uh, where there is basically no option for a receiver or he is just overthrowing an interception. Here's an example where he's getting pressured and throws to an area where the next best receiver is right here. Here's an example in the Clemson game. He's doing a good job evading sacks, but the receiver steps up and overthrows him. And for the last clip, I'll show a one-on-one -on -one man coverage play where we've seen the entire film breakdown. He's willing to test it, but on these occurrences, sometimes you'll get intercepted. 
My player comparison for Drake May is either Josh Allen or Justin Herbert. All three have super talented arms who are aggressive and excel at throwing deep. All have great pocket mobility and all have the ability to create after the play or give the play a second life. For Herbert, both are similar builds and have similar throwing motion, and overall, I get the feel from Herbert with Drake May. But I also compare him to Allen simply due to the crafty and creative nature of Drake May's playing style. But for Herbert, he's a bit taller, and I think Herbert is more consistently accurate than May. And for Josh Allen, Josh Allen is a lot sturdier and a bigger threat on the ground, and Josh Allen's undeniably got the strongest arm in the league. Both are kind of loose comps, but a good representation of the potential May has. And I'm giving Drake May a 7.1 prospect grade, and he's currently my number four player in the 2024 NFL Draft. And he's also my quarterback two in the class, right behind Caleb Williams. I think that Drake May has the potential to be a Pro Bowl quarterback at some point in his career. And I also see a chance for him being considered a top 10 quarterback at one point in his career as well. The conversation around May really surrounds him being compared to Caleb Williams and which prospect is better, who's gonna do better in the NFL, who should go number one overall. If you would have asked me, I think that Caleb Williams is a bit better and a more safe option for the number one overall pick. Caleb Williams displayed college dominance for three years and two different teams, not only winning the Heisman, but I think Caleb Williams is the best quarterback prospect I've ever seen, but that shouldn't detract from how good Drake May is. May has gotta be a top five quarterback prospect I've seen as well. And a 7.1 grade is very high. He would have been my number one player in last year's class. And if he was drafted in the last five classes, I think he would have been either quarterback one or quarterback two easily. I think that Drake May should go at number two to the Washington Commanders, but if the Chicago Bears decide to take quarterback and they think Drake May is better, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they take him number one overall. But that's going to do it for my Drake May prospect breakdown. Let me know your views on him and make sure you go watch the rest of my prospect breakdown series. I've already done guys like Caleb Williams, Marvin Anderson Jr., and Brock Bowers, but also make sure you go read my full scouting report on Drake May on my Substack. Link is in the description. And as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow my Twitter, follow my Instagram, follow my TikTok, and I'll see you guys in the next video.